I want to give the floor to our sponsor and muse, His Excellency Dr. Talal Abu Ghazale, CEO of TAG Organization and Senator. Please, Thank you. Excellency. Thank you. I, um, how do I get this on? Okay. I have, uh, I have given Ali Ashalik, our great uh, chair, a written document uh, for presentation, which I will not read. And I will speak outside the text, taking this opportunity to send uh, a few messages. Uh, to begin with, I was very instrumental in my previous capacity as chair of UN ICT Task Force and UN Global Alliance for ICT for Development in uh, forging the Millennium Development Goals. Now we have the SDGs, which are the inheritance of the old uh, mission of the United Nations. And I, in both cases, I think what we need and what we needed is to realize that we are in an evolving revolution of knowledge technology. And uh, both objectives should have been more specifically focused, I know that there is a general mention of technology in all of these documents, but I cannot see any engine for sustainable development except technology. And I'm putting this view of mine in a book which I hope to have uh, published in a couple of months on the brave knowledge world, what I call brave knowledge world in which we are going all to live in a different way from the way we are living today. Now, and as I am a great believer that technology is the driver of everything, I'm starting the first school of business, or whatever you want to call it, technology, in the world, which doesn't graduate students academically. It's a, it's a university which graduates inventors. And you will not get a degree if you do not invent. This is a new concept of a new sense of direction in education, not to produce, and I spoke about this when I addressed MIT, both MIT and Harvard last month, and I said something is wrong with the mission of education in the great universities. They have not yet learned the lesson why they had so many great dropouts, because the world wants innovators and inventors and not just learned people, because you can learn, you don't need a school nor a teacher to learn. So anyway, today I'm very pleased that we are focusing on technology for sustainable development. And therefore, I, what I would like to say is, uh, in this direction, we are very proud that we are proposing, a, we are now discussing a partnership with UN Habitat, with this wonderful leader of uh, UN uh, regional office, uh, a, great, a great lady, Zena Ali, who I have, we have been privileged to have her lead UNDP and now UN Habitat in the region. So we're talking about a partnership under ECOSOC guidance between the private sector and the UN in the form of a project for implementing SDG 11. And that is a substantive approach to the process and not just a general a discussion. That's why I would like and love this meeting to come up with some concrete conclusions about how we are going to proceed after this meeting and not just consider that we have met and enjoyed and learned a lot from the distinguished participants and speakers. Uh, what I would like to say is in, in, this, in this concept and in this context, uh, technology is about all. I had the privilege of being on a panel like this with Bill Gates, and when we talked about what, I asked him, how do you describe the rest of this century? And he said, artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence and the internet of things are what is going to change the world, and are what is going to achieve sustainable development. And without recognizing this fact, we would be just uh, philosophizing. If we want to get sustainable development on track, we have to see how artificial intelligence in the media of Internet of Things can get us where we want. 
I'm very lucky that I serve today also on the board, on the high level advisory board of UNDP for social impact. Because while we're talking about development and the importance of sustainable development, what is the impact on the citizen? So uh, UNDP established a high level advisory board on which I sit, and we're looking at how, what is the impact and what should be the impact, and we're going to develop uh, uh, social indicators for the implementation of any of, of all these goals. Having said that, and I don't want to go on with any longer, I just want to say in, finally that um, I, believe, I believe this meeting should be the start of a process of, of making technology the machine, the engine, and the tool for all the SDGs. And when we talk of sustainable development or of cities in particular, I cannot think of any way of separating all the SDGs because they're all linked together with one enabling factor called the technology. And when I talk about technology, I mean artificial intelligence, internet of things, and all the related uh, uh, sub consequences of these gr great inventions, which are now fo the becoming more prominent after the establishment of the SDGs. The, the SDGs did not realize the, the adverse, uh, the, imp the advance and the impact of uh, artificial intelligence and internet of things on things and on the way we will live in say year 2050, where we are expected to reach the point of singularity, where we and things will be one community. That has to be taken seriously, and not just to think in terms of the traditional concepts of development. Thank you very much. Now I would... I'm, I'm sorry to, to inflict upon you the burden of listening to me another time, but uh, that's a, it's, uh, it's an experience in hardship, so I'm sure you will tolerate me for a few minutes. I am here to talk about uh, a model partnership between the UN and the private sector. Uh, in, under the auspices of uh, ECOSOC, we signed a memorandum of understanding between UN Habitat and Talal Abu Ghazali organization, a private sector capacity building, education, and intellectual property world leader. So we thought that we can have a model approach. Under, at that time, the previous Secretary General was keen on the concept of partnerships. And we, what, this was one of the uh, model uh, partnerships to be implemented. The idea was to develop a, an initiative called something with the words Network 11, meaning focusing on SDG 11. And uh, I'm very, very pleased now that uh, we are now at this point trying to put this project uh, into implementation in my capacity as uh, co-chair of this project with the UN Habitat uh, Director General or Under Secretary, Deputy Under Secretary, Deputy Secretary General excuse me with the UN terminology, I come from the rat race. I'm not used to those uh, very high level serious uh, uh, titles. Uh, we, in, in, in our community, everybody is Mr. or Miss. So uh, I, uh, I am, now we have a very able um, director general, director of UN Habitat in the region in Cairo in the person of uh, Her Excellency Zena Ali, whom I have worked with for more than three decades 
in, in her former capacities as UNDP director in different locations in the region. And uh, recently she has become the UN Habitat instead of UNDP director for the region. So the idea is, and, I, and there is a good reason for this, what we're talking about is a global initiative. It's not for the Arab region. And I have to remind you that the oldest cities in the world were all in our region, in the Mesopotamia, basically in Iraq. All the ancient cities which disappeared. And the only existing old city, the oldest living city today is also in our region, Damascus, where Zena was the director at one uh, for many years uh, uh, as the director of UNDP office in, in, in Syria. So what we're talking about is a regionally based initiative, but for a global implementation. Our objective is global. We need to agree on the name for this initiative, and I'm proposing that it should be a combination of things, but certainly with UN in it, and certainly with reference to SDG 11. Just calling it Network 11 doesn't mean much to anybody. So we need to work on, on the name, and we need to work out on, on the objectives. What we have in mind was to produce, and we're focusing on the Arab world as a region only as a model, like when I was the chairman, the co-chair uh, of the UNIC task force and the chair of UN Gate, we took the, the concept in various regions for implementation regionally. So we would be talking about a model implementation in the Arab region, and the region we, where I preside or reside, and to see how we can develop three things. My concept, and I leave this for the debate, my concept is to create three things. One is a best practice book, which tells how success, what success stories and what best practices as, uh, are there in different countries in the, of the world. Second, to develop some guidelines and some general, well, we, well, I have been, I've, in my former life, I was an accountant. And I was part, I was part of the international community organization that established and wrote the international accounting standards. I formulated, I participated in the formulation of international auditing standards, accounting standards, and ethical standards for the accounting profession. So I believe in standard setting. So we need to develop some standards and not just talk in general and in, in theory, which is great, but let us, I, I believe in standard setting to, to make it short. Thirdly, is to have a monitoring and, uh, report. You cannot manage what you cannot measure. As an accountant, again, in my former life, I'm talking about 60 years ago, I started uh, my accounting practice, which is one of the world-leading practices now, the, what we call the G20 in the accounting world. And, and we have learned that measuring is very important for achievement. You, so we need to, to develop some measurement uh, methodology uh, for the implementation of SDG 11 in a model region like the region of the Arab world or in any other region of the world. So having said that, I would like to, to leave the, the floor to our moderator who would uh, undertake uh, the discussion but I just wanted to make an introduction and uh, state what I would like to see as a roadmap. Thank you. Yeah. I, before we close, I, I, coming from the business sector, we are interested in the bottom line and interested in the results. We're results oriented. Uh, I would like to suggest that I endorse uh, Director Zena Ali proposal for 
model using conflict countries as a model for our initiative. I would uh, like to engage with uh, Zena in presenting a, an implementation plan to the Deputy Secretary General of UN Habitat for implementing the MOU uh, in, in, uh, in its entirety and uh, that we uh, proceed accordingly. I am involved uh, like you and they like you and I am involved in the reconstruction and uh, uh, development process in the post-conflict in these countries, particularly Iraq, uh, Syria. Uh, we are very much, uh, my firm is very much involved in providing consulting services uh, for these uh, countries. So uh, I think we can consolidate what, what I'm doing in, in, uh, as a consulting firm together with uh, UN Habitat uh, resources and uh, um, Zena's great expertise in the field and um, submitting uh, a proposal with not just what we want in the, for, in the form of what is the name of this initiative to give it a name that makes it understandable. Just saying Network 11 uh, doesn't mean anything. It can be network for anything. And uh, also how uh, to, to uh, um, develop a strategy or an action plan uh, and as well as uh, uh, the, the implementation uh, model, which uh, m although we are talking about, uh, uh, but by the way, I want to emphasize that our region, which is the Arab region, is the fastest growing urbanization region in the world. So if you're talking urbanization, the highest rate of urbanization process is in that region. So it is an excellent model for what we're trying to do globally. Uh, therefore, I would like to say that uh, I'm hopeful that we can come with the conclusion of this session, of this section of the, uh, today's meeting, that we make this proposal to the director, Deputy Director General and say that we would like to proceed uh, uh, this way uh, with my full support to the uh, approach uh, Zena is taking.